10 years of age, two years of lessons, and see what came out. In this video, we're going to talk about the musical journey I went together with Christian on the trumpet and how you too can learn to play more intuitively at the trombone. Stick around. So Christian is certainly an exception, the most gifted student I've ever had the privilege to work with. When he first came to me, he was aged eight, thin as a rake, very shy, but there was something interesting about him. Every time I mentioned a melody, do you know this song? I always got the response from him, I know that from the recorder. He'd learned recorder in Germany, a typical primary school instrument. And it became quite clear to me early on that he had very good musical replay recognition of melodies, especially. So I did the beginning of an experiment with him um, in a process of learning that I continue to this to this day because it was so successful. And you may know this book, Essential Elements from Yamaha. Maybe I just lent him the CD to begin with. The point is, I didn't give him the book, the notes, the sheet music. For the first weeks, months even, his only reference to these pieces of music on the trumpet was oral. And he learned one melody after the other together with some aid, some repetition. Of course, it didn't happen in a flash, but he was very quick. In addition to that, we did a lot of echo games um, in the lessons always building up the levels gradually, and his ears were trained in a very systematic way. Ultimately, this culminated in the performance you saw just now, which I'll show again at the end of the video in more detail. The only thing that was slightly limiting was his range, which also became two and a half, three octaves. Um, within a couple of years, he could knock out that high B flat, the high C if you're transposing within two to three years, which I think is quite phenom phenomenal. The kids, uh, the adults around him in the, in, in the um, brass choir where I was working um, were getting quite jealous because he was quicker than them, better than them. <laughs> this kid was so spectacular that ultimately I could throw nearly anything his way, including Louis Armstrong solos to some extent, and he became better than me at doing this. Um, the most incredible story was uh, sending him a klezmer piece in three movements in different keys. And the first one he learned in D minor, the third movement was in F minor. And I heard him playing it and it was a little lower. He had learned it in the, say, in the first key. So he had automatically transposed it to a key that he was already familiar with the trumpet unconsciously. And this really fascinated me, this showed me the possibilities that the the human brain has um, especially of course in a young age so let's have a look at some more of this footage of what he managed age 10 and then even a few years later age 12. <laughs> So in both cases, he is not reading any music there. He has memorized that music. So in the words of Miles Davis, I'm no coincidence. This is the same for any great artist, great musician. It's the same for Christian. This didn't ho happen overnight. The kid was very open to the process, has great ears, um, and just worked a lot. <laughs> it worked pretty hard as well uh, because he enjoyed it because the process was, he could see that he was just flying away in no time with this process, not being locked into the notes and the theory, which so many students get lost in and end up giving up. And you may be thinking, okay, Nick, he was eight when he started. That's ideal conditions to begin with. How can I, as an adult, um, with my day job, how can I get into this process? Now, of course, it's not going to work as quickly as with an eight-year-old, but I simply don't believe that it's ever too late to learn these approaches, these more intuitive approaches of learning. You could say we're opening up the other half of the brain more with this style. It's a style I've specialized myself in now in the last few years, also with adults, and had uh, 
spectacular successes recently. So it takes away kind of some of the hurdles that you are facing when you're reading music in the book because then you're focusing on the maybe not the right things because we are making music and not making those notes which are in the book. <laughs> so if you've made it this far, I've got great news for you because I've just had a live webinar on this topic of intuitive learning at the trombone. I've made this available on demand. Follow the link below to register where we go a lot deeper into this process, understanding the benefits of it and some very specific methods of how you can get into this process. I call it finding your launch point. A lot of us just get overwhelmed because we don't know where to start and what path to follow. So I'm providing a structure here for you with this process. Wherever you're at, as long as you can sing a pitch, then you can play it. If you can hear it, if you can sing it, you can play it. And that is the basic philosophy of my most su successful style of teaching now. Follow the link below for your on-demand webinar. See you next time. Because sometimes myself, I, I struggle, you know, to get everything perfect. But when doing like this, you will kind of skip that. Now we are just focusing on creating the correct um, pitch, right? And that's a good thing because then you can train the air and, and uh, make it sound musically at the same time. You kind of shift your focus away from the instrument, simply change away. And you try to make music instead of doing everything right technically. And that's a good thing. And a lot of echo games and obviously repetition of small aspects of those melodies in the lessons and transposing them through the melodies. <laughs> transposing them through the melodies. Um, due to just the sheer boredom or the the uh, the ridiculous amount of brain work uh, that is 